Welcome to Monmouth in Focus, a comprehensive look at Monmouth County, the place you want to be. Monmouth County is centrally located in the state with 27 miles of Atlantic Ocean shoreline, nationally recognized parks, state-of-the-art libraries, school systems, and public services. Monmouth County is home to more than 660,000 residents. It's a great place to work and live. Monmouth in Focus will highlight county services that are readily available to you as a Monmouth County resident. Thanks for joining us for Monmouth in Focus. You'll know why Monmouth County is the place you want to be. Hello and welcome to Monmouth in Focus, a program about the services and functions of Monmouth County government. I'm Cynthia Scott, your host for this segment of Monmouth in Focus. We are here on location today at the Monmouth County Correctional Institution. It is one of the largest county-run facilities in the country. And joining me right now is the Monmouth County Sheriff, Sean Golden. Sheriff, thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, th thanks for hosting us uh, and, and, and welcome to the Monmouth County Correctional Institution. Thank you so much. Sheriff, the Monmouth County Correctional Institution is run through your agency, the Monmouth County Sheriff's Office. Let's start by talking about, you know, what types of inmates are housed here? Yeah, well, as you know, and, and you stated in your intro, I mean, this is the largest county facility in the state of New Jersey. Uh, one of the largest across the country uh, in terms of county facilities, and, and we're proud of it in, in the sheriff's office. It's uh, really, truly one of our highlights, and it's, uh, it's well-respected and well-run in the state of New Jersey. Um, in, in terms of the inmates that uh, we house here, uh, we have uh, local inmates uh, that, that come from the county uh, judicial system. We have our state inmates and federal inmates. And, uh, you know, the local inmates are those waiting to be sentenced uh, or waiting a, a trial court, and uh, they, they stay here for um, no, less, no more than uh, a year, 364 mm -hmm. days. Uh, and then we move them out to other facilities. So you can spend a day here or in upwards to five years, depending on how long you're waiting for sentencing. But once you're sentenced, uh, we move them on to uh, the state facilities. And again, if they're sentenced to less than a year, they will just... They will do the time here. That's okay. correct. Yep. You were talking about state inmates as well. State inmates are awaiting trial here and... Uh, a little bit of both. We mm -hmm. have uh, state inmates awaiting trial. Uh, sometimes we take overflow from the states if the state institutions are overcrowded. Uh, they'll send uh, some inmates uh, this way. Mm -hmm. And so. the federal inmates. And we have our federal inmates. Uh, we, we do house uh, for uh, federal agencies uh, such as ICE, uh, Immigration and Customs. Uh, we house a, n a number of inmates. Uh, and the federal and state both pay. When we house their inmates, uh, they give us a per diem rate um, that we collect uh, as a source of revenue. Right, a revenue generating yeah. yep. program. Yep, we generate revenue here. Uh, last year we did over $12 million mm -hmm. in the facility and uh, it's because of housing those beds. So when you look at a wing uh, such as this, uh, we have to keep the, the wing open or the pod open, um, you know, whether there's uh, five people or 66 people in it. And so if we have empty beds, much like a hotel, we'll uh, rent them out and um, count that as a source of revenue. Right, you mentioned a hotel, this is a 24-7 uh, operation. This is a city within a city, yeah. uh, really. This, this is a large operation. Like I said, it's the largest county jail. Uh, we have uh, 1,328 bed capacity mm -hmm. here in the facility. Uh, generally, we average uh, you know, anywhere from 1,000 to 1,100 inmates. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's 24-7 operation. Uh, I credit that to the uh, entire staff we have here. We have over 381 employees at this facility. And um, well, we have 300 corrections officers, uh, 22 uh, sergeants, uh, 10 lieutenants, uh, I mean the warden and the deputy warden, and right on down to our 44 civilian personnel that are here. And, sure. and, and then we have our private contractors that are here for food service and medical and, and commissary and the like. So it's, uh, you know, it's quite an operation. Certainly the largest operation within your agency and perhaps the largest operation within the county. Yeah, uh, okay. th definitely by far. Yeah. Uh, this is, uh, you know, the sheriff's office is one of the larger operations mm -hmm. out of all the county uh, divisions, departments, and offices. And, um, you know, we, uh, as part of that, the correctional institution is the largest within the sheriff's office. So, and uh, certainly takes a lot of resources uh, to run. But uh, I have to tell you, and being sheriff uh, for the, the, the last couple of years, um, it, it's, it's tremendous to see uh, the dedication of the staff here, not only the corrections officers uh, and, the, and, the, and the command staff, but uh, the civilian staff and even the private uh, companies that we hire to come in and uh, run those other operations is, is a tremendous effort. You know, Sheriff, I think when people first enter a jail, uh, they have this preconceived notion, right? People behind bars, it's scary. But when people walk in here, I, I've seen their faces, it's, it's kind of like... Well, I mean, you could see it. So we're, we're standing yeah. in, in what is really, uh, you know, like the other pods uh, mm -hmm. that we have in the facility. We have a uh, direct supervision model. Uh, where they have a day room and they have a, a courtyard and uh, you see the cells uh, that are behind us. 
And it's, uh, you know, some of those TV shows that you see are, are not really de de depictive of what is uh, going right. on or what transpires here in our county right. facility. Um, so on the direct supervision model, uh, they, the, the, the inmates do have some uh, freedoms. Uh, again, they can um, uh, gather in the day room here and they can use the courtyard. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they have their uh, bunk made in, the, in their uh, cells right behind us. And so this is indicative of what's around our entire facility, all, you know, 1,328 beds. The actual facility, the jail, was built, I believe, sometime around 1970, and then it was remodeled in 1990. Yeah, the late 80s, and then uh, finished up in 90. We went through a, a major renovation, um, which we went to the direct supervision mm -hmm. uh, model, um, in increased uh, other areas in the jail, uh, you know, and, and did some renovations, some much needed renovations. Mm -hmm. Uh, to the institute. When it comes to direct supervision, you're saying that the, the inmates are able to, you know, be out in the in the pod area and the corrections officer is, is as well out with them. What's the what's the goal there? To, to well, the, the goal there is, you know, if you look at other models, uh, linear supervision per se, you know, you have, a, you know, maybe a main hallway with uh, a bunch of rooms and they're, they're locked, you know, in, down in the room and there isn't too much movement. Um, you know, which for rehabilitation purposes and you know, as it is, a, we call it a correctional institute for a reason. We like to think that we can rehabilitate uh, as many of those that want to help themselves uh, back into society. And so this gives them a little bit more of uh, a freedom and uh, it's, it, will, it decreases the uh, amount of violence uh, that's right. in the facility and, uh, you know, increases uh, officer safety. So those are some of the things that we look at in the direct supervision model and that's, that's what we see here. Walk us through the process if someone is arrested and they start uh, through booking, I guess. Right. So uh, generally what happens, uh, and we can take an arrest out in, in any one of our 53 communities. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we have 48 police departments in the county, uh, all of which operate. Uh, so if they do make an arrest and somebody's not bailed at the station or released on their own recognizance, they'll be brought here by the uh, police officer. Uh, they enter into our booking area through our sally port mm -hmm. uh, that's a double cage system so it's a kind of a locking chamber the car will come in the, the gate behind them will lock and then the gate in front of them will open and then they'll, um, they'll come into the booking area where all our uh, inmates are searched and screened and all the information is uh, taken down and not only screened but you know by saying uh, just generic personal information but they'll also get a medical screening and any type of psych screening if, if it warrants it. So, mm -hmm. And then from booking, they come up into a, a holding area. And uh, hopefully they're not staying that long. You know, we, we don't want to see people uh, you know, housed up here. Uh, but at the end of the day, if they are to stay here, they go into a classification process in which we classify the inmates. And, and that classification, there's 13 or so classifications and from nonviolent to violent, uh, gender specific, uh, whether there's some type of illness or involved or substance abuse. So those classifications are uh, placed upon the inmate and then they are moved into locations throughout the facility so based on classification. And obviously the females are, are, are yep. in one yeah, area, se the males separated. are in another. Yeah, they're segregated. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the most obvious classification. We start there and, yeah. then, and then work the way down in classification, you know, um, nonviolent, violent substance right. abuse or illness and, and then we and, and if they're federal inmates we house them separately mm -hmm. so right so you wouldn't house a someone who's in for child support with someone who is charged with yep. murder yep we um we we spread them out throughout the facility based on classification mm -hmm. let's talk about you talk a little bit about you, you, the people that work here but let's start from the top the warden oh uh, the warden uh let me tell you the, the warden and the deputy warden the way they run this facility um, it, it's, it's done with such professionalism and the, and the warden, uh, he's come up through the ranks here at the Monmouth County Correctional Institution in the, in the Sheriff's Office. Uh, he started in 1987 and he's worked his way up through the ranks and he's a dedicated individual. And uh, let me tell you, he, he knows every inch of this facility and uh, he knows uh, his staff members very well and uh, you know, some of the inmates. So it's, it's uh, really, it's, it's good to see someone come up through the ranks and run the facility. Absolutely. Somebody so knowledgeable uh, in, the, in the correctional industry itself. And um, particularly uh, in this point in time when budget constraints are, are, are such that, you know, we're looking at every dollar spent and we're looking at ways to become more efficiencies. And he always brings new ideas to the table. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, for him and the deputy warden, uh, Nadrowski and all the command staff, I, I, I really can't say enough about their leadership here. Underneath the deputy warden would be captains, then lieutenants, sergeants. Yeah, we have two sergeants. captains, and we have lieutenants, sergeants, and then the officers. We have 300, mm -hmm. 300 corrections officers here. I know that uh, we recently had a graduation of corrections officers. We did. Mm -hmm. We did. We had 11 um, graduate from the Monmouth County Police Academy. Mm -hmm. We run a correctional class, and that's to fill. You know, we have retirements. Mm -hmm. and 
and resignations, and so uh, we, you know, we backfill those spots. Uh, we just had 11 graduate. I attended the graduation a couple weeks ago, and it was exciting to see uh, some new recruits come through. Sure. And, and they go through extensive training. They have a 11-week uh, course uh, that they partake in all kinds of uh, training from paperwork to uh, suicide awareness, uh, baton training, um, you know, physical training. So uh, really, it's, uh, it's intense. It was intense when I saw the program over there. Being a corrections officer, obviously, is not for everyone. It's kind of like being a 911 operator as right. well, just not right. for everyone. <laughs> well, that's why I said in, in all three of my divisions, there's just special, yeah. special individual. I right. mean, the ded dedication is unbelievable mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, to work in, in, in one in this environment, much like uh, the communications environment and, and the challenges that go with it, and then, um, you know, the hours that are put in. And, you know, uh, the, the officers work nights and weekends and holidays, and yeah. it's tough for their family members. Um, but it just shows their dedication and, and how professional they are, uh, particularly in our agency where we're fully accredited. Um, so, uh, you know, I really, I always commend the staff uh, for their dedication and, and really um, their hard work. Also, when, when you walk around the jail, you see the inmates working. They're, yeah. if they're in the, the kitchen area preparing lunch or dinner, and, I mean, they, they, are, they have duties here. Well, they do. It's an effort to rehabilitate, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so part of that rehabilitation process is uh, to, to get them working, to get them uh, to be productive uh, when they're here. And so you'll see inmates uh, that are walking around the facility um, that are productive in uh, maintenance. Uh, you'll see them uh, in the kitchen mm -hmm. area, mm -hmm. um, you know, so they, they do cleanup, uh, you know, they have assigned tasks in and around the facility and, uh, you know, it, it makes them, I, I think, uh, have a little sense of pride sure. in the facility and as you can see, um, I mean, we run, uh, people are always amazed, I had uh, some uh, mayors and, and, and governing bodies in and they're always amazed about how clean our facility mm -hmm. is. Again, not really what you see on TV. I mean, right. it's, a, it's, a, it's an immaculate clean facility. Some of that's due to the uh, maintenance staff uh, on the county employees and then and the combination and, and in, in concert with the inmate labor that uh, right. goes into it. Yep, absolutely. And we're going to be talking about the inmate labor program in our next segment yeah. of Monmouth in Focus. Yeah. But thanks so much for joining us for this segment, Sheriff. Lots of uh, great information oh, here about bet. the Monmouth Great to County have you here. Thank you. Institution. Thank you. That is all the time we have for this segment of Monmouth in Focus. More about the Monmouth County Correctional Institution, you can log on to www.visitmonmouth.com.